Right, hello, I'm Debs. This is Debs Made This. Welcome. This is Friday Sews, the knitting and stitching show edition. So, welcome back. I'm going to do a slightly late Friday Sews on a Saturday, but then I thought I would tell you all about where I went on Thursday this week, which was to the knitting and stitching show. So I've got a little bit of fabric to show you, a bit of footage that I took of some of the textile art that was displayed and then kind of a general update. So I hope that's OK. So first of all, to say thank you to everybody who's been um, writing comments and responding to my questions. It's so nice to hear what you're all up to and what you've got to say about things. The Knitting and Stitching show is held, uh, like this is a tiny version that's held in Yorkshire compared to the version that's held in London. And is essentially a place where there's lots and lots and lots of our favourite fabric sellers and patterns for sale and yarn for sale and then some textile displays so kind of artists and embroidery prizes and um, some of the graduates from uh, textile design courses and similar are on display and it's a good place for to meet kind of people that you already know who so or to meet new people and uh, Yes, is normally a very good day out. It runs from Thursday to Sunday. I nearly always go on a Thursday because it's quieter. And what I normally do is to book an early workshop so I kind of get early access into the show in the morning so that um, I'm not so overwhelmed. But I was brave this year and I just went at the normal time. I wasn't going to go at all. I won a pair of tickets from the lovely Sally, who's the Yorkshire sewist. So uh, thank you to Sally for enabling me to attend. Then nearly everybody I knew was already going on a different, on a different day because I had decided that I wasn't going to be going. Um, so I got in contact with Jen Legg, who's uh, Jen Legg at Tease Creative, I think is her hashtag. You'll know her as Jumpsuit Queen Jen, I am sure. And she very kindly offered uh, to come and meet up with me and kind of be about... Uh, like as a face that I knew during the day, which was very kind, and her wee gang, including Natalie and Janet and all the rest of them, who are just the most the most lovely people, and say so they looked after me. The short version is that I'd had uh, I've had PTSD from work, and I have have been having trauma therapy recently, and had been finding uh, busy spaces with lots of people quite overwhelming. The last time I went to the extinction last year, I found it quite hard. So I wasn't quite sure how it was going to be. So it was just very nice to know that there was going to be a couple of familiar faces there uh, and that we had a plan to kind of uh, meet up for afternoon tea later on. So I shall insert some of the footage as you went into the knitting decision. There was some textile art made from, from some found materials, which I shall insert here. I spoke to the lady about, about it because I asked her if I could take some photographs and as you know as old as Edwardian some of these textiles that she um cuts and makes into pieces of art they would do it yes absolutely beautiful I don't know whether I would ever be brave enough to chop up something that felt that precious to be honest they, they look stunning and you'll kind of hopefully be seeing them so that one was kind of as you went in through the main entrance and um, there are like four halls which have different things in and you get, you know, if you buy a programme, you can kind of see where the things are that you want to go to. I had some things in mind that I wanted to buy. Most of them were for presents. And I find that's the only way to, to manage at this kind of place is because there is so much beautiful fabric that um, it's very easy to get distracted. And I patently, as you all know, have sufficient fabric to be going on with. I deliberately looked at the most recent fabric that I'd bought to make sure that I was very clear about how much fabric I have. I also have my little Excel spreadsheet. So if I ever think that I need to buy more uh, burgundy corduroy, for example, I know that that is not a requirement. I also require no more green or navy, I think, denim. Anyway, there's two colours of denim, which I've definitely got sufficient of. Um, so I kind of had a plan, but I didn't find the fabrics that I wanted. So. I went, I made a beeline actually for Stitch Fabrics, which is um, Rosenberg and Sons, and they are just the most lovely chaps. Jeff is the, um, the older, the dad of the business, and he is, uh, it's always his birthday around about this time. He's such a sweetie, and the fabrics that they have are really interesting, and I was seriously tempted by some silk, but I did not buy them. 
several of the people that I with it was with did so I was able to live vicariously, which was nice. I also didn't buy any more uh, wool suiting because they had some beautiful wool suiting, as did one of the other stalls. And then it came to rainbow fabrics, and I went and looked at a fabric. I looked at three fabrics on there that I really, 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 really liked. Um, but I wasn't convinced that I really needed them. So I kind of went away and then uh, went outside, went and had a cup of coffee at, at like a local coffee shop and said hello to a couple of friends. Um, and then when I came back in, I thought, oh, my goodness, if that fabric's gone, I'm going to be so disappointed. I better go back and get it. So I did. I went abroad. So from, if you're in the UK, you probably know Rainbow Fabrics. So Rainbow Fabrics are designer dead stock and ethical fabrics, apparently. Uh, they come mostly from Turkey. He goes and, and picks up supplies in Turkey. And the one that was I was besotted with is this. So this is a viscose fabric. Um, it has a deep tealy green background on and then these very large caps, which I don't know if they're jaguars or cheetahs or leopards. Um, I don't know. If you know, put in the thing down below. I'm sure somebody will be clever, clever. And know. Anyway, I thought that this was a very lovely thing and a very nice colour. So I was very pleased when I went back. So I've got three metres of that. Uh, and it's good and wise. I'm hoping that is going to be enough to make a pattern that came recently. Hang on, let me show you that. So this... Now, ignore what the front, you know this, ignore what the front of the pattern looks like. So this is the V1511, which I got from the new thrifting one. Oh, the Maker's Web. So uh, the Maker's Web is a new kind of thrifting patterns of fabric site. And I shall show you the line drawing, if you can see that. So it's a shirt dress, but the, and there's got like this um, collared placket which kind of goes halfway down. And then it's got an A-line shaped skirt rather than a gathered skirt. And so, yeah, I had in my head I was probably going to make it with a with like a lightweight tensile denim, but I'm hoping that my Jaguars will work. And while I was there, I spotted this. Now, I only got a metre of this. And there's a tail. There's always a tail, isn't there? But... um. I thought this is a really nice colour. It's it's like a it's a boiled wool, I think. Um, it feels quite woolly. It's not horribly thick, so you can see that there's some still some movement in that. And the plan with that is to make a kind of topper. So there's a Tsuti pattern that I've forgotten the name of. I shall put it down here. And I'm probably not going to buy that pattern, but what I thought is I could size up with one of my slightly grown on sleeve t shirts to make that kind of look. So then the idea is it goes over the top of shirts, a bit like what I've got on today, really, but with a round neck, probably. Um, so that there's just a bit of a kind of shoulder cover, but that it's a layer that's not too bulky. So I was going to wear my green sew-up cycle dress, which is a Silver Saga Ella dress pattern that I've done some embroidery on recently. And so I was quite excited to wear it. And then I realised it was going to be not good weather. And I did not have a coat that would fit those accom accommodate would not accommodate those sleeves um so i thought my brain was kind of worrying about the things that i could do so my other thought was that i might quite like to make a sleeveless coat so take one of the coat patterns with a kind of collar probably a shawl collar or something like and take the sleeves off leave that o o kind of overhang of the uh, bodice piece into a slightly into the slightly dropped sleeve so leave that there then bind those edges so that then the big sleeves of things like the yellow dress and some of the other ones can can go through so that was my thought so um yeah we'll see if that comes to fruition so i did that's all the fabric i bought you're not very impressed i did buy a couple of other things while i was there though i went to see uh oh uh oh bear with I went to see the lovely little rosy cheeks lady and I bought um, some labels. So this was my free one. My free one was an I made this one. Uh, I bought a, get one of each out to show you, sorry. So there is a, you are important, you are enough, you matter. There's these ones that say, be strong, be happy, be you. 
and this one that says you deserve to dream so that's kind of for nightwear for christmas yes yeah, so i was pleased with those and the other thing i bought was something i've been after for ages which is from the lovely jen hogg at generates so um this is a silicon hemmer so a hot hemmer so you use this to hem so it's got marks for the depth that you need and then a curved edge and a straight edge so that you can hem your garment depending on whether it's straight or curved uh, this is the imperial one but she also does a metric one and uh yeah so it's very robust and um yeah i'm pleased to get it and she's such a lovely woman she's so nice she was chatting to me for ages um and she'd been really busy so i felt a bit naughty about taking up her time and think she could have been having a cup of tea uh, but it was just really nice to talk to her we have a shared um interest in jean muir uh, who is a designer a uk designer i also looked at the jan beanie exhibition which is kind of stitched art and these were beautiful they felt so textured and lovely and i shall put some pictures of these in. Uh, and I thought that these were awesome. And then I moved downstairs and looked at the Hand and Lock, which is an embroidery award. So there's some of those that are kind of more wearable, but not really wearable. Um, and then some more art. Uh, I'm not sure I've got all the artists on one of the swings around, but, but I can probably find it. Um, but it was just really nice. It was nice, that mix of, you know, having a look at things, chatting to a few people, and then looking at some kind of proper creative process the results of creative process it was yeah it was really good so then um it was getting to kind of mid-afternoon time and we had booked a uh, an afternoon tea at a place called mama dorings which is in harrogate and they specialize in kind of cupcakes and sweet treats and things so i'll put a picture in of our um tea for two tray so i think seven of us went in total they managed to cater for gluten-free and dairy-free and vegan and all sorts of kind of special um anything that you could kind of come up with uh they will have a go at catering for it so let them know i think it was 25 pounds which wasn't too bad plenty of tea i didn't have you can have prosecco and things but we didn't have prosecco uh, and then we got to see what everybody had bought which was really nice uh so i i have a couple of sewing friends in harrogate but no, not like a little gang like that. And they were just so lovely. It was so lovely to spend time with them and kind of uh, listen to what they've enjoyed doing and to, yes, yeah, share some tea. So that was the end of my day. And I, I'm really glad I chose to go on the Thursday again. I felt much more relaxed this time ago and I would thoroughly recommend it. You know, maybe one year I'll be brave enough to go to the big one in London, but we'll see. I have a couple of other things to share. There's a couple of patterns that came and... I had to do that thing where I had to order my interfacing for the next few projects because I was like literally down to scraps. I've just done my, this is my hinterland number one, which is nearly finished. Um, and like I was literally down to scraps to do, to piece things together. So I thought that I would order some. And the new craft house, which is a fantastic site, had got some in and may had shown it and i thought i'm just going to get it so i spent like nearly i don't know like 35 quid on interfacing or something and i know i know it's worth it you have to buy the good interfacing if you want to get good results etc cetera, etc cetera. but it's just slightly good thing to spend all that money and all you're getting is interface not even real fabric so when i was ordering that and then i had to order some real fabric as well so i ordered this look at this beauty so this is swimwear fabric and it is it's like a micro rib it's so nice it's and and the color it's just yeah well you can see it's my color isn't it it's awesome so there was an ellian mac pattern whose name i've forgotten something like wave rider maybe which is long sleeve with a zip up the front so i am i'm gonna endeavor i'm away swimming in the lakes next weekend uh today is saturday i am going to endeavor to make that before I go, no, I haven't made that pattern before. So yeah, we'll we'll see how that goes. I might try and record it, but we'll yeah, we'll see how that goes. And I need um a long nylon zip to go in the front of it. A couple of long sleeve um suits that I really like to wear. They can be a bit tricky to get off. They're all right getting on, but sometimes they're a bit tricky to get off when it's cold. But they're definitely, I feel like, uh 
even if it's just psychologically it helps me when it's chillier and it'll probably be about eight degrees centigrade i think when we go so yeah that one's come in and that one needs to kind of get a move on the other things that arrived are two patterns so this came from ebay um and i have been looking at this pattern for forever and i think the real pattern if you buy it from the assembly line is like 22 pounds plus postage and i couldn't quite bring myself i mean it's such a simple pattern and yet the versions i've seen have been lovely so this was on ebay i think i paid eight pounds fifty or something for it delivered so um yeah maybe 10 anyway i thought i thought it was worth a go now and my friend Gemma, who is at generally bobbins gem on instagram um is a completely different shape to me she has a longer torso uh, she's much taller and she's just bought this pattern as well so we might do one pattern two fabrics and then feedback how we get on so let me know down below if that's something that interests you the other one that arrived is one that i have definitely had before which is the 9075 and if I can find it, I'll link the video where I talk about it. This is one of my favorite patterns, and I used it loads when I was much smaller. And so I had cut it to the size 14, and I definitely need bigger than a size 14 in in, in vogue at the moment. So um, I thought I would just take advantage. So I'd have it like a save search on this. You know, you can search on eBay and keep it so it tells you. So every time one comes up, it tells me. But they've been going for like loads of money, considering they come with a magazine you know and i wasn't going to pay 18 pounds for one that had come with a magazine so i was waiting so that's finally here uh, if you haven't made this i think nearly everybody in the world has made this but it is such a good pattern i've also made a couple of pairs in the past of the trousers and just added a waistband um and so then that makes like a wide leg trouser with a zip at the center back uh and they're awesome i've made a couple of the dresses and but my favorite ever was the jumpsuit was yeah it's such a good jumpsuit so yeah if i don't get on with the the um big jungle cats with the other vogue pattern maybe it'll become this one obviously cracking on with my hinterland it is nearly there and i think it's going to be okay i'm not sure it's quite my vibe in its current format but we'll see i've got buttons to decide and and i think what i might end up doing probably is like maybe wearing it open because I, I have got things that i have been making but i'll share those with you at another time so i hope that i've been inserting some pictures um and that they're of interest. It's really difficult to film there like when you're actually like like wandering around because it's so busy um and there's so much going on and so much noise that yeah it's quite tricky so um yeah, I hope that you kind of get a bit of the gist of it from the snippets that I've um, showed. So I shall say bye-bye. Thank you very much for watching. I hope wherever you are in the world, you are finding time to rest and replenish and do some making if that's something that brings you joy. And I shall say bye-bye for now and God bless.